Hello, my name is Krasia Tasio. I'm a sidereal astrologer and this is my lunarium. This is the prognosis for uh, the period of 16th of May to the period of 17th of May and it is based on the path of the moon. Um, I'm a sidereal astrologer because I'm using the fixed sidereal Babylonian zodiac and I will do my prognosis um, using the model of the ancient Babylonian astrologers and um, I will certainly use the path of the moon. During her path the moon is meeting, you know how fast the moon is, and she is meeting uh, fixed stars, um, planets, comets, and they are all ruled by divinities and all this is creating events in our lives not only events but has huge emotional impact on us the sidereal astrology is is astronomical because it takes into consideration the real sky astronomically and the fixed stars it is important to say that my um, Starting point, of course, is the position of the spring equinox, which is not anymore in the zero degrees Aries, but is already in the fifth degrees of Pisces. Because, as um, uh, was done in antiquity, we do take into consideration the precession and the positions and the changes of the equinoxes and the solstices. So why um, I'm using the lunar calendar? Uh, this is because um, actually in reality astronomically the, the lunar month is starting from the appearance of the first lunar crescent after the three days invisibility of the moon. So you know that the moon is uh, waxing, then at one point she's reaching the sun and during this uh, period of three days the moon is invisible after the invisibility we see the moon the three days invisibility we see the moon for the first time on the sky on the western horizon in the evening and this is marking the first month the first uh, the first lunar month uh, in antiquity every lunar month is starting with uh, nisan the first of nisan we on the 16th of May, when we will see the first lunar crescent on the western horizon in the evening, you can easily see this, we are starting the month Airu. The month Airu, uh, it is important to mention this so that you understand what is the dominance of the month. The month Airu is ruled by the god um, Ea. And so this is, Ea is the father of Marduk, Jupiter, and he's the grandfather of uh, Nabu, which is Mercury. And Ea is one of the most important god the, of the three uh, creators of the human being, creators of Earth. He is known for his, uh, as a ruler of the under, um, of the, of the sweet, um, ocean of the um, which is under the earth and um, is known for his magical abilities is known for his esoterics for being capable of uh, doing uh, consecrations magical rituals so you can imagine that uh, when we think how this would influence the month the month will be uh, we ha will have this intuitive uh, esoteric uh, spiritual influences uh, uh, of um, air. I'm starting with the first uh, lunar day, which as I said is 16th of May, a Wednesday. Um, we will see the first lunar crescent in the 23rd degree of Taurus. This would have been wonderful because there the moon is conjoined with very important powerful fixed star of um, money and wealth and luck which is Rigel but uh, Unfortunately, this, the overall situation on the sky is not that harmonious. So it's it. This wouldn't be the day for that. I would advise uh, for taking new initiatives for new beginnings because Mercury, who is supposed to help as well, 
is not really in his best position. He is still invisible, hidden in the rays of the sun. He is peregrine in uh, Aries, where he is not really very powerful. Then we have Mars, which entered on the 2nd of May Capricorn, and there he is conjoined with um, the lunar node Ketu, which is restricting him. And even though Mars is uh, exalted in Capricorn and strong, this doesn't make him good. And as I predicted in the previous video, um, this would have direct impact on the financial markets. This can bring... Um, he can cause... Um, violence and you see what happened in Syria when uh, Mars entered uh, Capricorn can be a reason for accidents depending where on the chart of uh, the NATO chart of certain country or person um, Capricorn sidereally astronomically is positioned on the other hand the month is starting the lunar month on the Wednesday 16th is starting with Jupiter who is in a phase of cosmic setting. This is a phase which is not very favorable for Jupiter. Being in such phase, he cannot give the benefits that he could actually denote to the country or the horoscope. So Venus also left uh, Taurus. Uh, when Venus is in um, Gemini, this is actually also not the best position for her and she's also not denoting uh, her her best qualities to the horoscope therefore even though the man is the moon is exalting in taurus conjoint beautiful star still um, this is not the most appropriate time for new beginnings uh, or for new initiatives the day is certainly not appropriate for surgical interve interventions, wouldn't be dangerous for traveling, uh, would be good for our routine uh, works and tasks. On the 17th and the 18th of May, uh, the moon is in uh, Gemini, where she is receiving the opposition from Saturn. Well, this is not beneficial, of course, and on this day, I wouldn't do any new initiatives, any new beginnings, no surgical interventions, no taking any risks at all. Uh, it is also important to know that on the 17th of, of May, the moon is in perigay. It means that she is at her closest position to us, which would say that some of us might really feel the presence of the moon very powerfully. Um, on the other hand, the moon is in Gemini on the 17th and 18th. Venus is receiving the opposition from Saturn and I believe on this, this would uh, be a reason for some issues, restrictions, difficulties in the friendships, in the love life, also some limitations related to the financial um, issues. Also, any restrictions related to what Venus is meaning, it is finances. Also, what I forgot to mention is that when I started, is that when, when Mars is meeting um, Ketu, the lunar node, um, this is restricting him and Mars is very important for the financial, for the world fin finances, for the financial market, because Ketu is very is spiritual. He is not interested in gaining profit. He is not interested in money. And while positioned like that, he will be restricting Mars. This could cause volatility on the world markets, but certainly won't be, um, won't bring any positive effect. On the next two days. The moon is entering um, Cancer, where she is meeting Rahu, the lunar node. She's making opposition with Mars. This day um, is risky for any violence. Uh, would, might have impact on, bad impact on the finances. Um, it's not recommendable for any risks taken, even for travel. So this is the 19th and the 20th of May. 
no surgical interventions also. While the moon is waxing, if you are a gardener, uh, this is a wonderful period for planting leafy vegetables, for example, because then they would grow well. On um, Why also these um, two days were not beneficial at all, uh, the 19th and the 20th? It is also because the moon will pass through the nebula of Cancer, and this is really not positive. Well, it could be very good for meditation, spiritual practices, a prayers, for any practices that would enhance or increase your intuition. On the 21st, the moon is entering Leo, where she will be in conjunction with the beautiful um, Regulus, one of the royal stars. Now Regulus is pure, beautiful, uh, leadership uh, star and this is uh, already the sixth lunar day. Uh, this is maybe the only not perfect but good day that you could benefit from in terms of new beginnings, in terms of um, new projects, in, in terms of trying to uh, do some successful initiatives related to a job or, or um, leadership. Further on, on the 22nd, the moon is conjoined with Zosma, astrological star. This could be beneficial pro period for those of us who do astrology or any esoteric um, activities. On the 23rd and the 24th of May, the moon is entering Virgo. Uh, again, this will be a good, good two days, 23rd, 24th of May, for any oratory work, for any uh, writing, literature um, work, for any... Um, creative activities, spiritual activities. Um, even though the moon will be making square to Saturn, she's the active part in this square, so this won't be so uh, dramatic. So you may benefit from this day um, in learning, creating, uh, in writing, studying spirituality. Again, the day is not appropriate for surgical interventions in terms of uh, gardening, yes, you may plant leafy vegetables. Um, moving further the celestial sphere. And here, the moon, on the 25th of May, the moon is making exact conjun conjunction with Spica. This is beautiful uh, aspect where, and you can benefit from it exactly in creativity, spirituality, uh, writing, studying, auditory work, uh, planting, of course, leafy vegetables, and, of course, as I said, spirituality. No surgical interventions. On the 26th uh, of May and 27th, the Moon will be in Gemini, conjoined with Jupiter, who is already retrograde. In Gemini, we have beautiful stars related to artic, uh, artistic qualities, making yourself visible through artistic activities. And this is Gemma on the 26th, and on the 27th, it is the star Zubana Shamali, which to bring this, especially Gemma, is very powerful in terms of making you very visible when you're practicing art. Charlie Chaplin, for example, had Gemma on a very key position on his uh, horoscope. So you can see how uh, artistic, talented, and how visible this star can make you. On the 28th, 29, the moon is entering Scorpio. There she is not happy at all. On the 28th is the first day when she's aiming at the full moon. And this day uh, is called the, cosm the a chronicle rise. During the chronicle rise, the moon is still very productive in terms of money, in terms of business. But it is not... Um, 
good still for new initiatives because the moon is in a fall. It is certainly not good for surgical interventions. The next day, the 29th, is the cosmic setting. This is very destructive phase. During this phase, uh, it is not advisable to, to do anything. Actually, in antiquity, during the full moon, people would uh, spend time in the temple, would, would pray, would contemplate, would, would meditate. They would, even they would have, um, would celebrate, but they wouldn't do any important uh, things. On the 20, after this day, after the 29th of month of, of May, the moon is starting to decrease her light. Then she will be a warning. So, the 30th of May, the moon is conjoined with Saturn, making opposition uh, to Venus. This can have bad uh, impact on uh, friendships, love relationships, finances. Um, even though the moon is warning already, I still wouldn't recommend the day to be used for any surgical interactions. The same is valid for the 1st of June, because the moon will then be in exact conjunction uh, with Saturn. On the 2nd of July, the moon will be conjoined with Mars. This could trigger uh, uh, issues with finances, also on the world market, with violence, with accidents. So I wouldn't advise important initiatives. I wouldn't advise uh, even traveling or taking risks. Surgical interventions, not. Also not. On the 4th of June, the moon is entering Aquarius, where she is not afflicted. Uh, she's conjoined on the 5th of June with Fomalhaut, which is one of the royal stars of, this is the star of the uh, spiritual priest, very spiritual, beautiful star, and you can benefit exactly like this for, for very beneficial uh, spiritual work. Um, this day could be one of the few good for surgical interventions. Um, sixth as well. And then the moon is entering Pisces. Uh, there she's receiving the square from Saturn. Not a very beneficial day. Not beneficial for a new initiative sur surgical interventions. And this is valid also for the 24th. Um, I forgot to say that the previous two days were when the moon would make um, the last square, the last quarter. This would say that still we need to be very cautious when inter undertaking new uh, things. Uh, on the 8th, the moon is conjoined with very powerful spiritual stars in the Pisces. That would say that we could really have very intense uh, spiritual uh, experiences uh, related to intuition. Everything that Pisces is bringing, in, it is all good. Surgical interventions, not advisable, uh, due to the square of Saturn. On the next uh, two days, 9th of June, the moon... 10th of June, the moon is in um, uh, Aries, uh, opposition from Jupiter, but this Jupiter is uh, the greatest benefic possible for uh, to have good routine business. But unfortunately, now Mars is squaring the moon, also not good for surgical interventions. On the 11th of June, the moon is entering uh Taurus conjoined with the Pleiades. The Pleiades are known for their magical powers, some of which are not positive. So this would say during this day do spiritual work. No uh, be careful with again with surgical interventions. Unfortunately the days for surgical interventions during this month and for new beginnings are not that many. 
but let's hope for better July. Uh, so this is on the 11th of uh, June. During this time already, just to say that Mercury is preparing to become visible as an evening star. So in about four or five days, we will, be we will see Mercury rising as an evening star. And this will happen in his sign in Gemini, but still he we won't really benefit a lot from Mercury since he's afflicted by Saturn. So you can see how, how we're lacking um, harmony on the sky during this month and how we can't really do a lot. And this day actually, the 11th of June, was the the last uh, the day of the last lunar crescent. So we this is the last day when we are seeing the moon. Not good for, for doing anything. It won't bring good results. You may travel, but carefully. Do your routine work, but no new initiatives. And then on the 12th of June, the moon is becoming invisible for the three days of invisibility. During these three days, in antiquity, people would do simply nothing. Celebrate, spend time in the temple, spend time alone, meditate, meditating, praying, um, using methods for enhancing intuition, anything that would keep you away from important uh, initiatives that would put you in risk. We will see the first lunar crescent for, um, this is, uh, I'm talking for the longitudes of America. So we will see the moon for the first time in the western horizon in the evening on the 14th of June. And with this, the next lunar month is starting from the 14th of June until around the 15th or 14th of July. And about the second, this lunar month, I will talk in the next video. Uh, a few days before the month, the month starts. And the moon, the, this month will have totally different um, dominance since another divinity will be ruling the month. So, uh, talk to you a few days before the start of the next month. I'm Krasia Tasio, Sidereal Astrologer, and you can visit my website on www.krasiancientastrology.com. Thank you.